Hello again. Uh, this time I want to share with you about English language teaching in, in, in Singapore. Uh, as you probably know, Singapore is a small country but is well known for its excellent educational system. Uh, Singapore students, for example, consistently perform well on uh, international tests such as those organized by PISA, Program for International Student Assessment. And uh, our students' excellent performance on the reading test on PISA is particularly noteworthy. Uh, people believe, and also experts also believe, that this is probably attributed to Singapore's excellent English language education system. Now, to understand ELT uh, situation in Singapore, we need to know a little bit about the context of language education or language education policy in the country. As you probably know, there are four official languages in Singapore, uh, Mandarin Chinese, Tamil, and Malay, and also English. Now it is the last one, English, which is the working uh, language of the country. English is used for business, for science, and for technology purposes, and it is also the language of instruction in all schools, uh, all the way from primary, secondary schools, and to the universities. In other words, if you are in Singapore, you will find that English is used on a daily basis and also English is used in school contexts. Now, English language teaching in Singapore has evolved uh, over the past 50 years or so. Uh, in the early years, the country adopted the more structural approach to language teaching with a focus on developing basic language proficiency. Now, up to the mid of 1980s, the emphasis was mostly on developing an overall proficiency in English, with an emphasis on accuracy and fluency in listening, uh, in speaking, in reading, and also in writing. From the early 1990s, there was a shift towards a more functional approach to language learning. Uh, the goal here was to develop communicative competence, a whole range of abilities that we would like our students to be able to do with English. Now, this mainly refers to the ability to use English for purposeful and for meaningful communication in the wider society. Today, now that the majority of the population have become more proficient in English, the current English language syllabus provides students with more opportunities to use the language for an even wider uh, variety of purposes. Now, students, for example, now learn English not only to develop proficiency in the language, but also to develop capacity to use the language more creatively, more critically, and also to connect with other English speakers from different language and social cultural backgrounds within the country and also beyond uh, the country. In other words, we want our students to be able to use English uh, in order to speak, communicate with a wider English language speaking community uh, in the world. Let me now move on and talk a little bit about the profiles of English language teachers in Singapore. Now, in order to talk about this, I think we need to understand how teacher education is done in Singapore. Now, teacher education is a highly centralized uh, you know, uh, system. It's largely managed by the Ministry of Education. And the ministry works closely with the only teacher education institution in Singapore, and that is the National Institute of Education, where I teach. The ministry recruits prospective student teachers through a very rigorous selection procedures. In other words, the ministry wants to recruit the best students out there in order to join the teaching profession. Now, once they are accepted, they undergo a rigorous pre-service training conducted by the National Institute of Education. Now, those with high school qualifications uh, typically attend four years of pre-service training uh, in order to get their teaching degree, uh, which is a bachelor's in education. And those with university degrees attend roughly about one and a half years of pre-service training in order to get their teaching qualification. Now, during their training, student teachers, or our student teachers, develop their core teaching competencies by attending a variety of courses on general education, for example, a course on educational psychology. They also take courses on 
you know, basic knowledge of English, for example, the grammar of the English language, and uh, they also take courses on how to teach English, for example, how to teach reading, how to teach writing, and how to teach listening and speaking. They also learn very important ELT principles that underpin the English language syllabus and how these principles are applied for teaching children in primary and secondary schools in Singapore. Let me now briefly explain what these principles are because, you know, when you speak to teachers in Singapore, I think most of them, all of them are familiar with these seven or so principles for teaching English to students in primary and secondary schools. The first one is learner-centeredness. I think this is a concept, a principle that most of you are familiar with. A very important principle that puts the child at the center of learning. Now teachers of course need to know the uh, different needs of their students and they should also know how to develop their lessons accordingly. For example, English teachers in Singapore are currently encouraged to adopt a teaching approach known as uh, differentiated instruction. This is the kind of instruction that addresses the needs of you know, everyone, uh, every single student in the classroom the low ability, the mid ability, and also the higher ability students in the same classroom. Uh, principle number two is known as contextualization. I think this is another principle that is, easily, uh, that is easy to understand. Uh, the principle means that students learn best when the lessons are situated and contextualized in a very meaningful and relevant local context, the kind of context that the students can relate to. Now, unless the context of the lesson is clear and personally meaningful to the students, not much learning can happen in the classroom. I think all teachers in Singapore are familiar with this idea. The next principle is known as process orientation. Again, teachers understand that the process of learning is no less important than the product of learning. At the early stages of language learning, for example, teachers in Singapore tend to focus more on the process of learning equipping students with the how of learning rather than uh, focusing solely on the end product of learning. Now, of course, in later years, you know, when the students get near to the uh, big examinations, uh, the focus shifts to product orientation uh, so that the teachers can prepare students to uh, perform well on the high stake examinations at the end of their uh, school years. The next principle is called integration. Now this principle means that language is best learned when they are integrated, when they are taught together as a unit. For example, grammar is not supposed to be taught in isolation, but grammar should be taught or embedded in a reading lesson or in a writing lesson or maybe also in a speaking lesson. Uh, the next principle is this interaction. Now this principle again is very important and this means that often means that language learning happens when students are given opportunities to make use of their language knowledge that they have learned in class in oral and written interactions. Teachers, for example, in Singapore often use group activities to engage students in what is called learning-focused interactions. So it's not just about putting students in groups, making them talk in groups, but the focus will have to be very strong on what they have learned and how they can practice what they have learned in the uh, you know, more interesting and lively uh, context of student-student interaction uh, in the classroom. The next one is, or the last one is uh, spiral progression. Uh, this principle emphasizes the importance of repeated encounters with the target language features at increasingly more complex contexts of use. I think we understand this principle very easily. Uh, language learning requires a lot of encounters and we believe that frequent encounters enable students to strengthen and also to uh, further reinforce their learning. Finally, let me mention uh, very briefly about in-service training programs for teachers in uh, Singapore. In Singapore, people believe or the government believe in lifelong uh, learning. So, Teachers are expected to continue to develop their professionalism after their initial training uh, stint at the National Institute of Education. Every year, they are encouraged to attend seminars and workshops organized by the Ministry of uh, Education. And after several years in, in service, 
uh, many of them pursue their master's degree uh, in Singapore or overseas, usually sponsored by the ministry as well. And upon completion of their graduate studies, they return uh, to teaching, and some of them may take up a leadership position, for example, as subject head or as head of department uh, within their school. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope I have provided a useful overview of uh, English language teaching in Singapore. And uh, if you have a chance to visit uh, Singapore, you'll be able to see for yourself how English is taught in schools and also in universities. Uh, thank you very much for listening.